Hi, I'm Femi OK and you're in the stream. Today, an acid attack can destroy a woman's face and body in a matter of seconds, but she often becomes an outcast for her entire life. We speak with one survivor. I do want to warn you that some of the pictures you are going to see on today's programme, they will be upsetting. But we think that it's really important that you see these images and hear the stories. So the reason we're starting this programme, we're doing this programme, mm -hmm. Malika, is because of a series of photographs that went viral on Facebook. Right. You're looking at what's happening online off the back of, of this sort of virality that went around mm -hmm. with these pictures of these acid attack survivors. Right. What are you saying? Well, that campaign was a continuation of a, a conversation that had been happening online. Yeah. And it had been happening under a hashtag called Stop Acid Attack. Now, that's had several hundreds of mentions over the past month. And they look like this. Alyssa tweets, I had no idea this was a common thing. Hashtag Stop Acid Attack. So we'll talk about how common it is and some of the stories behind that hashtag. We can't do it without you, though. So tweet us your questions and comments with hashtag AJStream. And we'll get to the conversation in just a moment. But first, here's a look at some of the other stories we're following from around the world. Imagine losing the features of your face, your skin, nose and eyes literally burning off. Acid thrown at you because of perhaps a rejected marriage proposal or maybe a fit of anger from a family member. Mm. It's estimated that more than 1,000 women each year are permanently disfigured in India from acid attacks. New legislation now calls for the sale of acid to be monitored, a 10-year minimum jail sentence for attackers and compensation from the state for the victim. In Pakistan, though, there have been over 100 attacks reported since January, and there the laws are even stronger, calling for a life sentence for attackers. Despite the laws, these horrific crimes are believed to actually be on the rise, and only a few cases make it to court. So here to discuss this from New Delhi, I'm joined by Monica Singh. She's a survivor and the vice president of Make Love Not Scores, Not Scars, that's a youth initiative against acid attacks. From Karachi, Pakistan, Dr. Mohammad Jawad is a reconstructive plastic surgeon who's worked extensively with acid attack victims. And from New Delhi, we have Rahul Saharan, whose photographs of acid attack survivors featured in a fashion shoot that went viral. And on the telephone from Pakistan, Marvi Memon is a Pakistani lawmaker who tabled the bill on acid attacks in her country. So it is good to have all of you today here in this conversation. Monica, it's really hard to understand a person who would do this to another person. What happened to you? Can you help us explain why this would even happen to people? I think it's uh, the people are so much into um, their own personal egos and issue and they are not ready to, you know, that somebody's de denying it. In my personal case is that I've denied somebody to marry at the age of 19. And I was an ambitious girl and I got, I got into my uh, graduation fashion design college and I wanted to pursue my course so seriously and wanted to pursue my career as well. But um, after denying the, the marriage proposals that the guy got so much anger and he's, he, he decided to ruin my life completely and left me for no one. So he hired a couple of guys to go through acid on my face and and then uh, the life got completely changed and uh, at the, that moment I couldn't understand that anybody can do it because I believe that we are a human we should not be trying to be a god to change somebody's life 
and for a second if somebody can change and design somebody's life in a so aggressive way which you carry on forever in your life right so it's a very harsh thing monica how long ago did this happen to you uh, it happened in 2005, nine years back, um, and uh, I was uh, I was I finished my first year graduation from NIFT, National Institute of Fashion Technology. So I was back home. Yeah. Right. Do Do you remember what it actually felt like for the acid to actually hit your skin? Do you understand that feeling that some some fresh muscles and the skins and the you know the everything is burning and the fumes are getting out of your body and you f you seeing yourself melting down like you are in a candle so you know that kind of a fe feeling and i started screaming about it like you know because i started feeling the burning sensation so it was it was something which i don't want to remember every time sure. and which i don't uh, which i want to keep it away from my life that's always been my motto you know so yes it uh, it it's, it's been in my life it it's a, it is a part of my life i sh i will be carrying this forever but again you know so uh, that part is is still something if i if i felt if you can understand it but you cannot feel it you cannot you know you cannot sense it what kind of a pain girls would ha um, have this when when somebody really threw any sort of a chemical on somebody so it was un i think i don't want to miss that part but yeah it was unbearable pain and even after that the pain can never ends you know your scars never let you to forget your past so it's uh, it's always been harsh and I think uh, the girls from the acid attacks, they never burn only the one time. I think they are burning every day since then because whenever they go in front of the mirrors and they always see themselves. So th these kind of a things remind them, you know, what happened to them. And when uh, when you go in a public place and people watching you, when they are judging you uh, through their eyes. So it's so, like so you are burning even then. Uh, Monica, let me just show people here how you used to look before this attack so this is you here and you are no, and you still are a, a very stunning young woman and then when you go out in the street now can you explain how people look at you what does that feel like um yes the perception got changed and uh, there are few, few good people so of course are there who always accept me the way i am and they always want be the way I uh, I am now because this is my life. I should be I should be making my identity in the society with my new face, right? Right. So if if you have your pre previous face and you keep comparing yourself, it's it's always an hard. So I always try to make people to remember me with my new face. This is my new identity. The people should remember this face, not to compare with the past. Sure. You know, Femi, you asked uh, uh, why, and, mm -hmm. and Monica explained her story, but so many people are, are, are asking that same question. An answer here, Shona says, 99% of acid attack cases are a failure of one-sided love affairs, lack of respect of others' desires, and no fear of the laws. You know, Dr. Mohammed, Monica explained what it felt like, but I, I have this tweet here that I want to direct from, to you from Shuja. He says, I can't imagine the physical and psychological pain those women go through who survive acid attack so physically medically what happens physically and, and psychologically well first of all let me say hello to Monica and tell her and be sure her she's still very pretty and very beautiful okay <laughs> and you, uh, we are all all there for her and she is it's people like her with her bravery and courage keeping this issue alive and hoping that this does not happen to somebody else so i salute her first of all okay now there are two components to it one is the physical component which you all let the plastic surgeon come and do so if you can prevent the damage great if you can't do it you must do whatever the best you can do so a patient achieve the best possible outcomes so we also have a lot of responsibility as a plastic surgeon or burn surgeon to treat this monster as soon and very aggressively uh, to a to reduce the the scarring of this the whole activity and use whatever we can to actually give a better outcome. So, Doctor Mohammed, what's the first the thing you would you would do when you see a patient? What's the very first thing you do? They've had battery acid well, thrown on them. If, what if do you have I to do? On, for instance, if I am on 
the time on call, if the patient is brought in right there and the injury happened, in, so this is the first hour. So the, the treatment starts from the, the point zero when it actually happens. So you need to wash and wash and wash. If you can add salt into it, because the chemical, if you add uh, water versus normal saline versus, versus hypertonic saline, tends to take the acid out of the system. So what we're trying to do, we want to neutralize the effect of the acid that to minimize its reaction time. So more it reacts, till it becomes neutral, it will keep on causing the damage and the damage goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Okay? So I I as soon as God forbid it happens... So, so doc, doc, take, a, take a breath for a moment. Ma uh, Monica wanted to ask you something. Go ahead, Monica. Yeah, I heard a lot of uh, a lot of people have shared some information about that who suffered from the acid attack. This immediately they should throw a milk on their body, the, the burn, burning part, and that that dilute the effect of uh, acid. So that that caused the less uh, less uh, you know the impact on somebody's body. So is that true that milk Listen, really darling. works? Anything, anything liquid to wash the mechanical effect of the acid will be helpful. But as if you don't do anything, then it's worse. But if you do something, washing it is definitely better. Now, to what degree it will help is difficult. But what we know now, that if you handle in the first 30 minutes, one hour, because this acid is not utilized for many hours, so the damage is continuing, okay? So there's a product now available which we're trying to make it available in our parts of the world, uh, in those areas which have got higher incidence, is a French product called Daspardine for Dyfex. So, Doctor, can you it say that one more molecule. time, very very slowly? It's something that actually takes the acid out of so the body, I understand. It, yeah, say it, say it one I, more time. I, this, this guy who has invented this molecule yeah. for the chemical burns should get a Nobel Prize at some point. Okay. Because How, what does it if do? If you have used it, yeah. it's called Daffordine. Daffordine. Right. Got it. So, it's a funny French name, okay? Yeah. It's a company called Prevo, which they are what would like to give this product free to India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, into the first aid of responders, right. so the ambulance people could actually carry it. All right, we, we don't have, we're not there yet. Doctor, access. take a breath for a moment, because people are listening to this, they're hearing these stories, they're hearing about the damage that's being done to women, and they're also going to be thinking, well, who is suffering, who is being actually taken to court for this so let me just bring in Marvi here Marvi this is something that you've been working on for quite a while if you're looking at the perpetrators uh, how often are they actually going to court are people really getting justice for these terrible crimes absolutely um, I think in the last four years that I've been working on this in my parliamentary years as a Pakistani politician uh, we have seen the um, the, um, the discussion the debate the awareness increase and um, the fact that uh, these issues are being discussed in media when these attacks happen, um, our media has become very um, alive to these issues. And when they're discussed, they're picked up, um, and people are then encouraged um, to not hide uh, uh, behind uh, their society uh, kind of um, stigmas, but actually to go to court. Um, and since more and more um, civil society organizations, parliamentarians, have now come together and of course um, are, are encouraging the victims in every way um, these issues are going to court now once they go to court um, the problem was four years back in Pakistan at least uh, that there was no law specifically to deal right. with this kind of crime um, we worked very hard I was um, very um, lucky that I was joined by very capable um, members of parliament from across the political divide so all political parties, especially women parliamentarians from all over Pakistan, came together on this issue. And um, we were able to come up with legislation, which then came up with something. Uh, some, uh, with so, Marvi, why is this still happening? Um, what, why very is specific um, um, sort of, um, um, you know, penalties. And the, the biggest penalty was the death penalty in terms of life imprisonment. Right. I mean, not death, but life imprisonment. And all that's right. the best we could have done at that point. All right, but Marvi, why, why do you think that there are attacks still happening then? women are still being attacked? I think uh, the original issue is when a woman says no. Uh, that's how it starts. And you've seen, um, you know, um, a similar conversation on your show right now. All you need to do is say no. And on the other side, if they feel that they can get away with it, then uh, then they will do it. Um, and in the villages especially, they feel that they can get away with it. Now that the law has come about, 
um, there's a deterrent at least. And um, I'd like to uh, congratulate um, Dr. Jawad specifically uh, because of Dr. Jawad and, and, and um, as well as Shalmin Abed Chinoy, uh, we had Pakistan uh, had a Oscar winning documentary on the subject. That also raised the awareness in at least Pakistan and around the, the world. Right. Um, and that documentary is called. Coming up, uh, sure. We're trying to do our best in terms of legislation right. and also law enforcement. So we're working with each, um, you know, with all the law enforcement agencies ensure that they actually implement the law that we have actually designed for Sure. Uh, and the documentary that Marvia is talking about, uh, Malika, Saving Face, which actually right. won an Oscar for a short film. Mm -hmm. So I want to give uh, our audience an idea of what we are talking about, and that's represented in this tweet, what kind of asset this is. Um, this is a, a tweet from Raghav, who shows us this, um, and it says in Hindi, despite a ruling by the Supreme Court, asset is still being sold straight out in the open. You can see it here in bottles. This can be cleaning fluid, uh, uh, other types of very chemical uh, things that are thrown at people. So Rahul, uh, speaking of make, yeah. raising awareness about this, and that's something that Marvi mentioned is so important. One of the things that people cite as raising awareness is your Facebook campaign. I pulled that up on my screen here. What's been the reaction to your pictures? Uh, the reactions were awesome. You know, uh, as soon as I uploaded them, they went viral. People were sharing them, liking them, and I got uh, thousands of messages and uh, appreciation from all over all the world. I think the main reason behind it were emotions. The, the feel in the picture, the connectivity, and uh, there there were more there were lots of people who used to say to these girls that uh, if you don't look good, at least you should cover your face. I think they will feel guilty, and they uh, in spite of feeling guilty, they, they will feel sorry, and they will uh, things will change. I think that's my perception, and uh, I I think things will change after seeing this photo shoot and. They, they must be respected and they, they they must get respect from the society so th that was the whole idea behind it monica you have a whole career going on um and you're a fashion designer and part of what you're doing is actually just showing other survivors that you don't have to hide away can you tell us more about that uh well yes um I, like i said like i'm a fashion design graduate and i have uh, five six years of working experience in this industry i had a couple of hard times you know like you know people don't hire somebody who's not doesn't have a, a perfect face or something but yes that never stopped me and um that always makes me to keep get my face uh redo it again again right. and um like including uh, including like uh, right now i had like 44 surgery has been done on my face all right so i'm going to slow you down again because you're so used to telling your story i'm just i'm just going to say yes you did hear monica say 44th surgery what was the most recent thing you had done monica um, uh, well, I had got my uh, the neck elongations done again because I oh. had a restricted net. I didn't have, I couldn't move my, um, you know, the neck uh, completely on the right side. So that restriction and because like you know uh, that I recently generated fund for my education in Parson New School for Design. I'm going for the fashion marketing course there. So I um, uh, for that uh, I wanted to go uh, to for my education without any physical restriction on my body. Right. So I get the surgery done from my uh, from my doctors from Max um, in New Delhi and uh, um, uh, there's a uh, Dr. Sunil Chaudhary and Dr. Prati Karora. They have done amazing work on me and they immediately gave me a solution to get my neck a completely in a normal shape and the elongation. So now I have that uh, part is done. So it's it's healed already. So I'm good to go for uh, unrestricted education now. So that is the recent one. You know, Monica, you are a public figure in some ways. So there's a question here for you. Al Haji on Twitter wants to know how do you empower all the victims, he says, or survivors of disfigurement and discrimination, as well as raise awareness? Do you have tips for those who might be watching you now? Yes, um, I will say that since I've become a uh, vice president of Make Love Not Scars NGO, in this NGO, my uh, whole uh, point of working and getting participated into that, teaching every girl uh, some, some skills which I can and telling them what skills they can have and they can do something in their life and 
feel the worth uh, worthy again you know i today i said took one of my survivors to uh, to my doctors again and i also give them you know the solution of the medical things because i am one of those who have done multiple surgery so i i understand the impact and the procedure as well so i so i i also take them for their medical consultations i personally just give them a you know the session for uh, um for techniques of uh, apparels and the textile uh, like because that is my um, you know right. um, so you yeah, so basically extreme, monica so. you're, you're you're giving them some hope there's something i want to actually share with you uh marvi did mention the oscar winning documentary saving face dr jawad is in this documentary he sees many many patients he always asks them the same question what happened to you he's very jolly he's got a fantastic bedside manner until this one moment where he went um a young woman called Roxana and she had had her husband pour acid on her and then her mother-in-law pour gasoline on her and they both set her a light and this is Roxana telling Dr Jawad her story and just watch his reaction tum kahan rehti ho mujhe wo le gaye hain apne ghar tum abhi usi ghar mein rehti ho ha phir mere bacche bimar bahut ho gaye बहुत बीमार हो गया मैं फिर खर्चा उनको नहीं बर्दाश्त कर सकती थी मेरे पाप गरीब है इसलिए मैंने सुलह कर ली आपसे So, Dr. Jawad, this is the only time out of all of the times you met the patients, you did the consultancies where I actually saw you, you actually break down. What happens to these young women who are looking for treatment? How does what you do, the plastic surgery, how does that change their life? Monica is, is, is very rare and very powerful and very inspiring. What happens to other women? Well, I think it's a, it's a difficult, it's a difficult situation because every time you speak to any such patient, these are very special group of people, and they have a lot of expectation. And my job as a plastic surgeon, I need to compartmentalize my brains and what best I can offer her uh -huh. to physically improve. But I try to become the shrink as well, and of course, I have to keep the hopes alive to make sure that. whatever i could offer it will actually improve their outcome which is my responsibility and, and does it dot to so the closing moments of this show do, does it do you see the results from changing how they look and then how they are in society after you finish your work with them i this is what we do this is what the plastic surgeons do for living you know you make you transform people's lives right. so it so reconstructive surgery is also a similar kind of ethos that you transform their lives to make it better right and uh but this, this is what we do so what but what i am trying to do is is it's also encouraging them that you know it's like wearing your scars so sure. what rahul has captured is is these child women who are happy to carry themselves i know there's a sad story behind it but they have overcome it shows their resilience their human power their endurance that hey come on man we can walk still tall and we still have a dignity so the, the concept of throwing acid on the face is to basically deprive these young girls from their dignity all right dr But jawad um, we're going to leave it there i'm going to take you to the post show because we're not okay. done yet um malika what's the community saying about this conversation well ending comment on facebook from ibza who writes the culture towards women must change before any newly enforced law might make a difference All right. So, I'm going to the post show with Monica Singh, Dr. Muhammad Jawad, Rahul Saharan, and also Malika Balal. If you want to join in that conversation, hashtag #AJStream. Meanwhile, let me tell you what's on the next show. We turn to Ireland, where a suicidal woman had to prematurely give birth after she was denied an abortion. Her case has reignited the very fierce debate around Irish abortion laws, and we will be digging into that debate on the next AJStream. Until then, we'll see you online. Thanks for watching.
Hello again, we're discussing acid attacks in India and Pakistan. Let's get right back to that conversation. Actually, I want to go back to Facebook and just see some of Rahul's work here. Rahul, um, okay, so now you know what it's like to go yeah. viral. I'm gonna look at some of these pictures. Talk us through how you actually got this photo shoot. It's not easy to do a photo shoot. You've got to actually have a connection with your models. You've got yeah. to make them feel very comfortable. These are women who've been attacked in a horrific way. How do you get that bond going between you and your models? Okay. Actually, I know them from past around two years. And I so made them mates, even... So they're your mates, basically, then? Yeah, I, yeah. I know them. I made them. There is a, a kind of connectivity, you know, the comfort zone and uh, I think it's very much required for a photo shoot. And uh, when we first discuss, discuss about this idea to shoot them, uh, at that moment, uh, we were sitting together and we were discussing that how, how we have to execute this, what we have to show from this shoot, not only just the designs of Rupa, we have show so many different things to the society and uh, at the time of shoot, Rupa was... Uh, and Rupa, Rupa is Ru basically Rupa is uh, one of the young women who is an acid attack survivor. She's going to yeah. go into business as a designer, and she said, "Rahul, take yeah. some pictures of my clothes on these clothes hangers." Yeah. And then you said, "What?" Yeah, I, I said, "I said let's do it." Uh, and uh, then, then we discussed. We should, in spite of taking any professional models, we should take you only as models yeah. because I, you define beauty. You are confident enough, and uh, I think. Uh, these girls love to get clicked, you know, and uh, they are confident enough to face the camera. And I was really very surprised when I was shooting them. It was the first time when I was shooting them and I was really very surprised. That I did not tell them to do anything, you know. Uh, like I, when I'm on shoots, I, I always tell two models to make pause, do something, do lots of makeup and all. And in their shoot, we did not do any makeup. We did not do um, any much things. We did a bit of hairstyling and they were close by Rupa. and. Uh, you see the confidence, you see the emotions, wow. you, you see you, the confidence level is very high in the shoot, you know, and it, it was a very candid shoot. Uh, I did not tell them to pose, it was very natural, they were, they were looking as they look every day, Yeah. you know, and still they were feeling very beautiful and uh, they, they, they were very happy to get clicked, you know, when I was clicking them, uh, they were saying, I want to get uh, my picture near this tree, I want to get uh, background is nice and now I want to get on so far so, so they, they were, they were bossing but they were basically bossing you around I like that um, Malika yeah. <laughs> well Rahul you mentioned the beauty of your models and I, I will say that that is one of the things that most people commenting on your Facebook page said they're also on Twitter Anat says the photo shoot with survivors of acid attacks what gorgeous women their outer and inner beauty shines through uh, but Monica there's also a tweet here that I want to direct to you um, this is a question from Tay who says my great and singular question is how do victims want the government to help them what would you want from the government anything um, um, all I want is that just, uh, I just need an justice and uh, not justice to me justice to every girl and uh, this is not a uh, this is not something you know this is normal accident happened to anyone it, this is something to uh, the life ruining thing you know so I really want that girl, the government should consider the life imprisonment and also give the compensation to all these girls who can uh, who can spend that money on their surgeries and even if they want to learn something and get an education they can do that so I just wanted government to support in that way because I was good enough to um, uh, get, get a support from my family and get my uh, my, the, my face be completely done and you know that a lot of surgeries are we managed somehow but not other girls can do it so I really want government to help those girls at least and get them their uh, new life back because um, every everything has got changed so give them the new life with the new beginning so support these Girls, I would say to, to all my girls. What kind of reaction are you getting when you're saying things like that to people who have the power to change how acid attack survivors, what their life is like afterwards? What's the reaction you're getting? Well, um, see, everybody has their different perceptions, and um, I I started designing my life in a very customized way. I started taking uh, comments as a compliment. I don't care what people used to think. So there was a time then people used to judge me, and they used to say that okay, this something might I have done something wrong. That's why I deserve that. But I I need to I need to Monica, understand the I'm question is like 
Monica, may I, may I stop you just for a moment? When people stop and judge someone who's obviously had acid thrown at their face, how, do you, how would you like to actually educate them? What would you say to them right now if they see somebody like that? How would you tell them is the appropriate way to respond? I would say that you know India is full of like mixed uh, mixed cultured people and uh, they have they have a different different understanding you know like if somebody who's not that um, educated enough to understand the consequences and the delicacy of such situation of any girl and they if they judge these girls so the people can tell them that this is not the way to it but somehow it's very surprising that good educated people also started judging them that that's really surprising me i just wanted to say that anything can happen to anyone and you have no no idea what's going to happen to you next so mm. why why to judge us you know this is this is something what we we never thought would happen to us this is something it ha already happened so let's let us to move on let us to live our life because if we didn't die that back then that means we have a long life so we can't wait and sit home and cry all the time we should make best out of it now because since we are alive we can we can really make something out of it and so let us live as well so do not judge you you, you don't know where you're going so this is kind of a reaction i started giving to people like i don't i don't care what they think about it's like it's my life i have to design i i if i want you to feel confident about myself i stopped uh, i stopped um, you know taking society's uh, worries and i stopped worrying about what this thing about it i don't care about the society because i have to live so this is what always been my motto and this is what i'm carrying it with me always and i always teach other acid attack victims as well so uh, you always feel normal except yourself and you know to be um uh, be happy all the time because happy person always look good and and when you look good everything automatically stands around you know it's everything goes so good and Monica, so those I are, those are very I powerful know. words i also want to share a tweet from your twitter account this is from july um you wrote after i decided to come out i thought people would shout stop acid attack or humanity rise up but still acid is getting used to ruin lives but i will say with the topic of today's show we got this tweet from diane who says this has moved me to want to help acid attack victims i.e donating to a fund that pays for cosmetic surgery or even setting one up so dr muhammad jawad is there a fund hello dr muhammad jawad is there a fund that people can donate Sorry, to to question? to help with cosmetic surgery okay Okay, no, no, actually, let me, let me give you a bit of a, uh, let's, let's clear this. This is not a cosmetic surgery. This is a reconstructive surgery. What you're trying to achieve is to restore normality. So all these patients are entitled to have all the care in the world free at the cost of the government, anywhere in the world, by the way. So these are your fundamental rights. Let me give an example of Katie Piper, uh, the lady I've been looking after when I was in Chelsea in 2008. Not only that we treated her uh, in National Health Service and... Dr. Joa, just hold, hold tight for a moment. I'm just going to explain to people who Katie Piper is. And she's a very famous person who, you can have a look on my, my laptop here, who um, was attacked with acid in the United Kingdom. If you have a look here, there's a 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. You can see how the progression of her surgery has gone. And this is somebody that you've worked with, Dr. Jawad, just giving us a little bit of a background. Briefly, tell us what you want, the point you wanted to make, because a couple of things I need to squeeze in. We're almost out of time. Okay, so for Katie, she came in and I was called and we did some pioneering work on her to restore her because we went aggressively, take the whole uh, damaged multi tissue off and I, I reconstructed her in one stage essentially, instead of 30, 40 surgery, which is happening historically. So that was a, a big, big day forward and we learned that we could actually do that. All right, so but let me just return to that, to the community history. question, because this is really important. And I, I always say this to you, uh, Malika, when we have a show like this, I want to help and I need information because I'm not going to listen to Monica and Rahul and Dr. Jawad without knowing how can I actually help. So that was a specific thing. Monica, people are watching. I'm, I'm they want to help. I'm, I'm how do they do that? Dr. Part, Jawad, we're I'm, almost I'm, out of time. I'll give you a sentence. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. There are a group of people who help them restore uh, the surgery. Okay. So they are 
some foundations, the doctors, the plastic surgeons who mm -hmm. are actually uh, have put the efforts together. I don't know what's the score in, in the um, Indian Association of Plastic Surgeons. They, they have decided to actually come together. There's the International Society of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgeons called APRAS. They have a women to women program. There are lots of plastic surgeons in the world who have pulled the resources together, all right. the skills together to go out and do pro bono work to help all these kind of people. I was in All right, Dr. Jawad, I'm going to actually share year. the conversation. I'm wrapping up. I really appreciate your, your input here. Rahul, you do a lot of yeah. work with acid attack survivors. Where our viewers are actually watching this and saying, how can we help? What would you recommend? Uh, I think, uh, uh, first of all, we should accept them as a part of our society. Yes, and, uh, and in something pragmatic as well as that, because that's a big mindset change that I know that's yeah. work that you're trying to do. Anything else pragmatic they can do right after this show? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think uh, like uh, when someone is down in our family, we always are there to protect them, to love them, to make them feel good, and uh, to to give them confidence. I sure. think we we always do to our fam right. family. So. This world is also like a family and we should be there to protect everyone around whosoever go through this kind of things you know we should be there to protect them love them take them as a part of our society our family and i think if these things will be there there will be no crimes and uh, people will survive in a better way wow rahul you're a very hopeful positive force on this conversation as too is monica okay monica <laughs> you have an organization <laughs> i'm so i'm sure you're going to say well my organization is where you should put the funds but I'll, I'll give you the opportunity to say where do you think people can help how can uh, they help practically um, well um i will say that like, there is a lot of way to help these girls and right. um, uh, of course there's another way that people say that you know that they can donate to the foundation and then foundation will take care of it and something like that i would say that to, to keep it very transparent that the right money going to the right place and to for the right people and we can always work it out in a way that we can collaborate uh, um, an account with a hospital to the survivor and we can always promote that this survivor is going on a for the sur certain surgery so people can donate directly to the hospital for paying their uh, you know the billing sense so everything like right. that so, so there is no uh, there is no confusion it's everything is very transparent yeah a, li a little bit uh, of research jump do, online and then people can actually do that. All right, so Monica Singh, uh, thank you very much for being part of the program. Dr. Mah Mohammed Jawad, Rahul Saharan, and also Marvi Memon. We spoke to a young lady who was in Rahul's photo shoot, and we spoke to her in Hindi earlier on today. Her name is Ritu Saini, and we said to her, Ritu, what message would you give to acid attack survivors? This is what she told us. मतलब कि लड़कियों को अपनी हिम्मत नहीं तोड़नी चाहिए आगे बढ़ना चाहिए और अपनी लड़ाई लड़नी चाहिए और लड़कियों की गलती नहीं होती है फिर भी उनको इतना सहन करना पड़ता है मैं यही कहना चाहूंगी कि जिसके ऊपर अटैक होता है वैसे तो होना नहीं चाहिए जिसके ऊपर होता है वो सामने आए और अपनी लड़ाई लड़े Rishi Sainu, thank you to all of our guests for being part of this conversation. On Thursday, we head to Ireland, where a suicidal woman had to prematurely give birth after she was denied an abortion. This case has reignited the very controversial debate around Irish abortion laws. That is a debate that we'll be getting stuck into on the next show. Until then, I'll see you online.